In this section, we'll see how we can create workspace and start using SAP Data Warehouse Cloud. So we have a lot of options here. And first step you have to do if you want to start working on SAP DWC is that you have to start with space management. Space management is nothing but workspace management where you will create your own workspace. Just like if you have used tools like Eclipse, you give them a workspace that store all my data in that particular folder on your desktop. Similarly, here we have space management where you will be creating your own workspace and you will be doing all your work and your team also can do all the work in that particular space. So here, once you click on the space management, this is the screen. We haven't created any spaces, so you don't see any, but you can see all the details here. So most doesn't have any data yet. And we have here some symbols. We'll see what those are. To start with, uh, I see here one create space option and here manage plan option. When you click on manage plan, it means probably you want to buy more storage so you can go and do that. But we are not going to do it because we are in trial version and we'll work with trial version. So here I will be clicking on this plus sign to create my space. So I can give any name like uh, DWC training. And here uh, you will get the corresponding space ID automatically. But here you can change it like this and you can keep the text how you want or you can change it completely as well. So I will give this name DWC training and this is my space ID. So you can't change it later. You can still change it later. This name, but ID obviously it's unique, so you can't change. I meant I will click on create button. So here it will create a space for me. So it will be my workspace. So let me minimize this for timing. So here you see a lot of options on the top. We'll see one by one. So here, as you can see, I can change the name as I want. So I have the option. So I can name it like this, right? And this is active by default and space type is SAP Data Warehouse Cloud itself. Uh, this is a created by name, uh, created on date. And what is the status deploying because it is not still deployed and automatically it is getting deployed. You can see and it is deployed by default. It gets deployed if and if you don't do it, but uh, you can always explicitly deploy from here. And when you make changes, you can save also and uh, it says when it was deployed uh, storage assignment here. What you can do is you can define your storage because we have a lot of capacity given as a free trial account. But normally what will happen is your basis team or your admin team will decide this for you and they will give you a created space where you can work because they don't want to give you all the control. But in trial account, obviously you can change it. We don't want much of space, so we can just keep it like maybe 4 GB and some memory to make it fast like this. So I will have 2 GB of memory and 4 GB of disk. And here we have enable space quota where you don't define it. Uh, I think system defines it for you. But if I want, I can do like this. Okay. Next is world class priority. And here, what you can do is you can define the priority. If you think this space has higher importance, you can make it higher or we can keep it as neutral for timing. So what happens is when you have multiple spaces and all are fighting for the resources, then this particular space will be given priority in case there is a shortage of bandwidth or not enough resources are available. So if you have some high priority spaces, you can define them. So accordingly, system will give them a priority. Statement limit here also, you can give some kind of a limit on threads and how memory is getting consumed. You can enable this and define these things. And again, this will be defined by admin or basis guys. You need not worry about it. But for trial version, I will let system decide how they want to manage the memory and thread limits. So I won't tinker with this members. Now you have to define number of people members who can go and work in this space. So if I don't define my name, I won't have access to that. So let me see how many users are there. There is only one user, which is me. So I will select this and I will say add and this is added and you can add more users in this system. We only have one user. That's why it's showing this like this, but you can add more. Database access. Uh, once we learn about how you can expose your object, you will understand how it works. 
uh, I don't want to make everything default available for consumption. It means that my objects are available for consumption by, you know, reporting tool. We'll be consuming the views in SSE and there you will see the option and I will tell you how it works. But by default, I don't want all my object to be available for consumption because in cloud, remember, you don't want to expose everything because cloud is always vulnerable. Not that on-premise is not, but cloud especially. So you should make sure that you are not making everything available for consumption in trial account. It's all OK, but uh, I would not recommend this setting you should explicitly make object available for consumption. If you need that, don't take it in production system. Uh, I won't recommend that uh, database users here. You can define database users. Uh, we'll be doing it later. Uh, I will skip it for timing. It's not required. HDI container when you want to get some objects from HDI container, your SAP HANA system, you can enable the access for that. You have to raise a ticket with SAP. It's not available directly here. So in trial, probably we won't get it. So I will skip connections. Now connections is something, you know, all the system uh, which you have connected to. Now remember this is software as a service and what happens with cloud products is that things keep on changing. You will see this UI will be different probably in some time. Probably when you are watching this lecture, it is different. There are different options. So earlier connections were part of a space. Now it has been shifted to this part connection separately. So it keeps on changing. So even if you don't get any option, which I'm showing you here, it gets moved somewhere else. You will eventually get it under some section. And if there is a new feature, we'll obviously try to cover it in our, our training or we'll update it later whenever it is available. But for time being, you should remember that all the basic options will be available somewhere into these options. If it is not available where I'm showing because it's cloud, it keeps on changing. If you have worked on any of the cloud provider like AWS, GCP, Azure, you will see the UI keeps on changing every week. So it's very difficult to keep up training courses up to date. But if there is a major change, obviously we'll cover. Otherwise it will be available somehow or somewhere in these sections. Okay. So we'll go to connections later. And here we have time data. So time data is also important. If you have worked on SAP that you understand that you need time dimensions to get a lot of peripheral data and we'll see one example of that later. Right now it's not required. So I will skip uh, auditing. Uh, if you want to enable audit uh, read operations or change operation, you can uh, make it available for you, but it's not required here. So I will just skip and uh, I have done a lot of changes. So what I will do is I will save this first. And I will deploy this. And what other thing you can do is you can also monitor the objects. Okay. So this successfully deployed uh, right now. We don't have any objects inside, so you won't see much data, but you can always go here into monitoring. So you can see here we have, you know, path mentioned. So here we don't have any data for memory or disk. Once we start creating objects, you will see the data here. So I can, if I want to go back, I can click here or I can just click here. It will go to the next available option. So this is uh, done. And if I think I have created something incorrect, then I can always delete my space. So this is done. I can just cancel it and you will see that we have this DWC training available here. So here you can see uh, the space is created and it's active. You can see you have disk of 4 GB and memory of 2 GB, right? And you can see uh, there is one user which we added and there are zero connections for time being. So this is the space we just created. Now here uh, you can see we have one space. You can see uh, one is marked here and this is a symbol for cold spaces. That means the storage is used 5% or less. You will see green spaces here. If we have multiple spaces, then you may see some under green. If the storage is used between six to 90%, we may have a hot space where storage is greater than 90%, which can be alarming. So you may have to extend that memory size or you may want to reduce the disk space by eliminating unnecessary data. 
some may go to hibernate spaces as well so you will see the count here and this is the locked one once you cross the limit uh, then probably your space will get locked so if you want to unlock that space you have to extend the memory or you have to reduce your data which you are consuming so what happens is in production you will have multiple spaces and you can quickly have a glance uh, under which your spaces are falling and if there is any red hibernate or locked you can take quick action and here you can quickly check if there are unused spaces which is less than 5% so should you really have it kind of stuff you can do here and green is all fine so you should be okay with that so you can see uh, use disk is 82.8 MB of 128 GB this is probably the metadata which is getting consumed and we have assigned 4 GB of uh, disk and 2 GB of memory so this is how you create space and uh, this was your first step the workspace you have created and now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and explore other options and we'll start creating our object into space and you will see how it works so we'll go further in next section thank you